159. Vehicle internal. 155. Launch sequencer start. 150. Securing Centaur LH2. Securing Centaur LH2. 140. Launch enabled. 137. FTS armed. T minus 90 seconds. The launch vehicle, payload, ground systems, and eastern range are go for launch. 120. OCU's armed. FCS count started. 110. Vent valves locked. T minus one minute. Rock, report range status. Range green. Forty seconds. Stable at step three. Twenty-five. Status check. Go Atlas. Go Centaur. Go Sibbers. T minus ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three. Atlas ignition. Two, one. And liftoff, liftoff, the United Launch Alliance Atlas V rocket with the fifth space-based infrared system satellite for the United States Space Force. Now 15 seconds into flight, PU's gone to closed loop control. Engine operating parameters continue to look good. You are hearing the voice of Patrick Moore providing launch vehicle ascent data. Vehicle's now completing the pitch over program. Body rates look good. Seeing good chamber pressure on both SRBs. And RD-180 now beginning the throttle bucket. Engine response looks good. And now passing through Mach 1, Atlas 5 is now supersonic. And Max Q, maximum dynamic pressure. Body rates continue to look good through the boost phase. Vehicle's now throttling back up slightly. Engine response continues to look good. Chamber pressure on both SRBs continue to look good. Now passing one minute, 10 seconds into flight. Atlas is now 10 miles in altitude, 4.5 miles downrange distance, traveling at 2,000 miles per hour. One minute, 20 seconds into flight, standing by for SRB burnout shortly. Body rates continue to look good. Chamber pressure on the SRB is now tailing off. And we have burnout on both SRBs. Atlas will hold on to the SRBs for an additional 39 seconds before jettison. RD-180 is throttled back up to full thrust. Engine response looks good. Now passing one minute, 50 seconds into flight. Body rates continue to look good throughout the boost phase. And the Atlas V weight now weighs one half of its liftoff weight. And standing by for SRB jettison shortly. And we have good indication of separation of both SRBs. Now just under two minutes remaining in the booster phase of flight. Vehicle's gone to closed loop steering, seeing a slight correction in the body rates, now damping out nicely. RD-180 engine operating parameters continue to look good. RD-180 throttling down slightly now as expected. Two minutes, 40 seconds into flight. Atlas is now 39 miles in altitude, 68 miles downrange distance, traveling at 5,400 miles per hour. And the Centaur reaction control system is now pressurizing the flight levels. System response looks good.
Now coming up on three minutes into flight. RD-180 pump speeds and injector pressures continue to look good. Body rates continue to look good. Now about one minute remaining until booster engine cutoff. Pump speeds and injector pressures on the RD-180 continue to look good throughout the boost phase. Three minutes, 30 seconds into flight. Atlas is now 56 miles in altitude, 160 miles downrange distance, traveling at 9,000 miles per hour. And RD-180 is now throttling to maintain a constant 5G acceleration limit. RD-180 responses look good. And Centaur has begun the boost phase chill down sequence. RD-180 now going to 4.6G throttle limiting, standing by for BECO. And we have BECO booster engine cutoff, standing by for stage set. And we have good indication of stage separation. We have pre-start on the RL-10, standing by for ignition. We have ignition and full thrust on the RL-10. Chamber pressure looks good. Body rates look good. And we have good indication of payload fairing jettison. This first burn of today's mission will last approximately 10 minutes, 30 seconds. RL-10 engine operating parameters look good. Body rates have damped out nicely from the startup transients. And the RCS system has begun the initial thruster firings for system thermal conditioning. Just over five minutes now remaining in, or five minutes now into flight. RL-10 chamber pressure looks good. This is Atlet Mission Control at T plus 5 minutes, 20 seconds. Patrick Moore just confirmed successful completion of the early phase of today's flight, and all systems continue to operate nominally. The mission is currently in the first Centaur engine burn. Our next event, Centaur Main Engine Cutoff, will occur in approximately 10 minutes. Lockheed Martin builds the Sivir satellites for the U.S. Space Force. Here's a video highlighting the power of these satellites. Thirty seconds into flight. Last week, I had the opportunity to talk with Lockheed Martin's Melanie Young about the incredible capability Sibers Five brings to the constellation. Let's take a look at our conversation. Hey, Melanie, thanks for joining me this afternoon. Can you tell me more about what you do for the Sibers program? Yeah, thanks. I'm really excited to be here. Um, I am a systems engineer for Lockheed Martin Space, and I've worked in the U.S. Space Force's space-based infrared system or SIPRS program for 14 years. Wow, that's awesome. For our audiences, can you tell us more about what SIPRS is and what SIPRS does? Yeah, SIPRS is a critical system for the U.S. Space Force and for our national defense. Uh, it has a constellation of SIPRS satellites um, that continuously protect our nation and armed forces. Um, the SIPRS satellites are equipped with scanning and steering surveillance sensors. Uh, they detect missile launches and support ballistic missile defense, um, expand technical intelligence gathering, and bolster our situational awareness on the battlefield. Um, on the ground side, there's a ground station that receives and processes tons of SIVRS data. Uh, the SIVRS operators take that data and use it to make reports for defense and intelligence and civil applications. And SIVRS Geo 5 is the latest satellite to join the SIVRS constellation. Uh, so the SIVRS program is very important to our national defense. You mentioned that this is Cirrus 5. 
Uh, we've launched uh, four Sivers birds in the past. Can you tell us what's different about Sivers 5 compared to the previous satellites? Yeah, we're very excited about Sivers Geo 5. Uh, it's the most advanced and resilient Sivir satellite that Lockheed Martin has built to date. Um, it was built in about five years, and uh, it's the first military space satellite built on our uh, LM2100 combat bus. So that is the version of Lockheed Martin's uh, modernized modular LM2100 space vehicle. It has greatly enhanced resiliency. Um, that LM2100 bus is an internally funded multi-year modernization initiative uh, that has greater resiliency and cyber hardening, um, enhanced spacecraft power and uh, propulsion and electronics. It's got a lot of um, processing and features as well, where we have common components that uh, streamline manufacturing. And then it's got a flexible design so that you can put on uh, future modernized sensor suites. So this is a huge step um, toward achieving you know, this resilient missile warning uh, that is ultimately gonna follow on in next gen OPIR block zero. Wow, that sounds really important. That's really a, a, a significant upgrade compared to the, the previous birds that we've launched. Uh, I know for me working in the industry, I find it really rewarding to participate in some of the launches that we do, both uh, national defense and, and some of the science missions. What's it mean to you to work on the Sivers program? Yeah, I'm really proud to be a part of the Sivers program, uh, supporting our national defense. And Sivers plays such an incredibly important role in supporting our, protecting our country and our armed forces. And uh, I'm, I'm really proud to be a part of this team. Awesome. Well, hey, thanks for talking to me today. Um, we recently received some sad news that a, a mutual teammate, Bill Levinson, had uh, passed away. I know that uh, Bill had a tremendous career with Lockheed Martin. He's also a, a longtime ULA employee when we formed ULA in 2006. Uh, he worked in our chief engineer's office, um, both in the major development as well as a chief engineer for the Delta program and then the Atlas program. Uh, he you know, contributed in, in numerous ways to all of our, all of our programs. Yeah, yeah, we thank Bill for his many years of service to the industry, and uh, he will be missed. Well, thanks again for joining me today, Melanie. Um, it was really great speaking with you. Yeah, thank you. Once operational, the Space Delta IV team at Buckley Air Force Base in Colorado will control the Sibirs Geo 5 satellite. Let's take a look at a short video message.